Welcome to the last circuit we'll be building in this video series. In this video, we're going to attempt to automate that Dino Run game in Google Chrome. This is very inspired by the video that Cameron is going to edit on screen now, which I realized would actually be a very good use of some of the concepts that we've learned so far. The thing that's actually taped to a screen is a photoresistor, which is the thing we are going to use to measure the change of brightness. So a photoresistor changes resistance based on the light it receives. The more light it receives, the lower its resistance will get. Now, if you've done Eng 1300, you would recognize this circuit as a voltage divider. This is a very common circuit that's used in electronics that is going to allow us to measure the change in resistance of this photoresistor. The wiring of the circuit is going to be pretty similar to before, except we're going to take out the potentiometer and the button and insert the photoresistor. As before, I've just got the power wires in there already. I'm going to connect the ground of the servo to ground. This time I'm going to put the voltage straight into 5 volts because we're going to be turning it on and off based on the screen, not based on the button. And I'm going to again plug this into pin 6. The other thing I've done is I've actually very interestingly soldered this long lead on this photoresistor so I could reach my screen from the breadboard. So with this, I'm going to need my resistor. I'm going to put my resistor here. Where that resistor is plugged in, in the middle of the board, I'm going to put this wire in. That's going to go to A0. And with this long atrocious thing, I'm going to put one side of the photoresistor to 5 volts and the other side to that analog read. So with that, we can start coding it. So I'm going to make a new project. And this is going to be quite similar to the last code. It's actually going to be a bit simpler. We're going to include servo again to help us do all our nice things. We're going to have the pin numbers. So we've got our photoresistor pin. It's going to be on A0 this time. And our servo pin is going to be on pin 6. Now we have our other variables. We're going to be constantly measuring the light that comes out of that photoresistor. So for the moment, I'm just going to put light. We also need to create the servo object. So we're going to be using servo. I'm going to call it arm again. And with that, I think we can start going to set up. So we're going to initialize the pins in their right pin mode. So the pin mode of the light pin will be an input. And similar to before, we have to use this arm.attach of servo pin. I'm also going to start serial communication because I actually don't know what brightness value we're going to need to differentiate between an object and just the background. In our loop, we're going to have the light equal the analog read of the light pin. And for the moment, I just want to put this on the serial monitor just so I can figure out what's going on. So as everything's coded now, we've just set up the servo. We're not actually using it yet. And we're going to see what values we get out of the photoresistor. So there's an example of it freaking out when we give it something that hasn't been declared yet. Entirely on purpose. So if we cut over to the camera now, <laughs> you can see something that looks pretty funny. I've just dock taped the photoresistor to my laptop. So I've just soldered these wires on just so they're longer and they can reach the breadboard and stuff that's down there. So if I pull up the serial monitor right now, we should be getting the analog readings from the photoresistor. Currently we're sitting at 293. So I'm actually going to Pull up paint. So as I do that, you can see on the serial monitor, this now goes up to a 
840. And if I get the fill bucket, we can see on the serial monitor, it goes to 210. So this actually means that we can use it. Uh, I don't expect that exact same brightness from that gray. So that gray is looking like it's giving 690. And the dark gray about 280. So the next thing we're going to do in code is just give some variables for the servo just so that we can hit the space bar correctly. So in variables, I'm going to give a press angle. Um, and this will be equal to something, but I don't know yet. And this is going to be the angle needed to press spacebar. I'm also going to have some rest angle. So this is going to be an angle that's just not enough to actually press the spacebar down. I'm also going to have some sort of press time. I'm just going to set it to a tenth of a second. I'm not sure. This is the time the servo arm is going to stay down to register a press. So we're going to send the command to go down, wait this time, and then go back up to the rest angle. Because as we saw before, as we increased the speed, the servo couldn't get all the way around because it wasn't fast enough. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put this rest angle as we start. So I'm going to start so the server is resting. Then in the loop, we're going to put a simple if statement. Now this if statement is going to say if light is greater than, we just put 500 because we know the rest was around 280. If the light is greater than 500, then we want to Press the space bar. We want to delay by the press time. And we want to go back to where it was. This is the rest angle. And I think with that, I'm finally ready to tape the servo to my laptop. And I just remembered I haven't actually set these angles. I'm going to assume the press angle is about 15 because it looks about 15 now that I've put it on the laptop. And I'll assume the rest angle is probably 10, so 5 degrees less. So it's going to come back 5 degrees. All right, now let's upload that. Okay, so it's now in the rest angle, so it's gone down. And if I put some of that light gray in front of it, it presses space. Okay, now I need to move it back. All right, I have to put the gray in front of it. Looks like a press to me. Might not quite be enough, but we'll see. Okay, so now we're gonna move it into position. So I'm gonna guess that, I'm going to assume that we're going to need to jump around. Yeah, let's go there. All right, beautiful. Let's see what happens. I don't think it's pressing hard enough. No, okay. So going back to the code, I'm just going to increase this press angle. I'm also going to increase the rest angle just so it's not moving as far. Okay, that's uploaded. It's not bad. That's actually very cool. Oh, he's getting close to hitting them. 
Oh, all right. Place them a little further out. We'll go again. All right. Can you do better than last time? 